Hi, uh, welcome to the bathtub. This is the second of our virtual uh, browsing, library browsing episodes, which, uh, which I, did, I did one last a few days ago, just because we can't leave the house, we're bored, and people actually asked to look at my books on the bookshelves. And it was, it was uh, I spent no, lo, no time preparing for it at all. And all I did was go around and show people my books on the bookshelves, and it was the most popular video I ever put on YouTube. <laughs> I got like 400 people looked at that stupid video of me looking at books on the bookshelves, and it was terribly put together. I wanted to show I, a couple of things I want to talk about. One is, first of all, I, I, I where are these? Oh, there they are. See, I, I just wanted you to see this. I have a, a bunch of notes. I find these around the house. I'm kind of old. I'm pretty old. I'm almost 65. And all my life, I write little notes, like I'm going to, when, I, when I'm when i teaching or I'm working on something or writing something, and I literally find them and I go, what the hell are these? And I have no idea what they're saying. And I don't know what they mean. And I have no idea what they talk about. But I just wanted you to know that I actually did write notes to talk about uh, during this uh, this uh, this video. And I've already forgot what they all are. Okay. So uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do a second video was... One of the, I think that Dan, or I think someone named, someone named Dan, who originally suggested this crazy idea in the first place, he said I should slow down. I, I, I wasn't, I, no one could see the books. So I thought, okay, he said, he said, you should just do one video on each bookshelf, on each shelf. And I thought, well, that's too much. That's too boring. And then I realized I hadn't actually shown you an entire bookshelf. So, so this is, this is the bookshelf I didn't even show you the other day. As you notice, I put a shirt on and I've got pants on at the same time for this that video. And this is the other shelf. This is in the guest room. This is the only place I'm allowed to put bookshelves because otherwise, when I lived in London, every literally every wall was a bookshelf. And uh, I was constantly walking into them. So that's the one I built in this room. And I thought we would try Dan's suggestion of just looking at one shelf, okay, and one, I'm not one shelf, but one bookshelf. I'm not going to spend on each each shelf. And unfortunately, I don't really have very good production crews. I've warned you. And this is some, some, this is like a refurbished apple or something. And if you look, I try to go for mass market paperbacks because they save space. And this is a lot of stuff up here. This is more, as I mentioned last week, I, I'm kind of interested in reading Edgar Rice Burroughs mainly as a Californian more than as anything else. I didn't grow up reading him. But I've been sort of assembling all these uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs books. I never read Tarzan in those books when I was a kid. But I read some of them and they were okay. I think he's interesting. That's my John D. McDonald. So if you look there. I'll try to hold this long enough so I can. So you've got all the old Travis McGee books. We've talked about Travis McGee in old episodes of this. And then all those old paperback thrillers of his. All of them by Fawcett Gold Metal. And you see The Drowned, and um, Contrary Pleasure, and Where is Janice, Janice Gantry, and all those, all those old Fawcett Gold Medal paperbacks, which I picked up over the years. And John D. McDonald is one of our favorites here at the bathtub. We haven't, I haven't talked about him in a while, but um, there's, there's Richard Matheson. We haven't actually done an episode of Richard Matheson, but he's great for the bathtub. There's some Arthur C. Clarke and some Ursula K. Le Guin. This is... Some of those old, the old, uh, what was that series, the Viking series of little kind of modern masters, and, you know, they're okay, but I, they're, they're, so some of them are interesting on different writers. This is the Pelican. I picked these up when I was in London all the time. They're really nice little mass market um, biographies. Most of them are pretty good, and I like that Pelican series. I think it's in the 60s or so far. There's all my Steinbeck. I kind of grew up reading and loving Steinbeck. There's Flaubert. So we really try to be eclectic. We don't try to organize our books in this in this house. So we got Flaubert next to George R. R. Martin. What the hell, you know? And there's some great Flaubert, and he is one of my all-time favorites. And that Madame, Madame Bovary, I've I've probably read more times than any book in this house. In that edition, the Steve Buller Stigmal edition. Um, I like George R. R. Martin. I haven't really read a lot of them, but I we like the TV show, and I read enough of them over the years to like it. There's my my Simmet, my Salinger. There's some of those old, I showed you my, I have all that complete, almost, a, I have a complete set of the Chekhov that came out in London from Heinemann at the turn of the century. And I, I have, I have most of the Turgenev 
in different editions. I'm not keeping that collection as, as I did with the others because I just don't have room. But I have every Turgenev. There's some old Sturgeon, my old neighbors, Ted Sturgeon's great paperbacks, some of the great mass market paperbacks. Um, here's our Flannel O'Brien shelf. We've done Flannel O'Brien's a big favor here. Here's the Clark Ashton Smith. Just a couple of volumes of Clark Ashton Smith. There's the Henry Miller stuff. I'm reading most of my life. There's some old Jules Verne stuff. He's another guy I've never read a lot as a kid, but um, he, he's actually a pretty good writer, from what I can tell. These are the books here. These are the, I don't. I don't think you probably see much of this because this video is terribly produced. But the, um, the everyone everyone's read these when they're especially writers. They all read these Paris Review interviews with great writers, and I grew up reading those. I loved reading those books when I was a kid, particularly as a teenager. There's my, some some of my Alden, and he's all mixed all over the place. We like I like Murakami. I didn't. It took me a long time to get to Murakami, but I do like him now. I have read I've read a lot of those. I've read them all. Um, here's here's one. We got a guy named Janet John John Sanford. One of our one of our uh, someone wrote me on the uh, an interesting guy named Aris wrote me about John Sanford, and I haven't read him yet. There's one. There's a lovely book. Tom's a cold. This is. We're big fans of John Collier here, and that's a beautiful first edition of a very rare book. It's very hard to find that book. There's some of our Lafferty. If you look, uh, I'm, not, I'm just going to go one shelf at a time. Um, there's Lafferty, Philip Larkin. I have all the, I have tons of James Fenimer Cooper, who's not one of my favorite writers. But I did my graduate thesis. My, my, my graduate professor, my, the head of my dissertation, John Rowe, was a great guy. And the only bad thing I regret about knowing John was he told me I should do James Fenimer Cooper for my, my dissertation. And he was right. It, it was really important for the dissertation. But I had to read all the James Fenimer Cooper and I couldn't stay. I still still don't really like him. There's some more I see Clark. There's the William Volman we talked about. There's a nice little set. I'm slowly to get from Hippocampus Press that St. Joe she is doing on classic horror writing. There's some more Flo. I, I like Jeffrey Wall. I've read essays of his on Flaubert, and I I think he's really really good. We go down here. If you're lucky downstairs barking. There's Out of Bridge Reach. I got that signed by Robert Stone. I interviewed him years ago. There's Monkey. I'm, I'm trying to read through the entire collected, the entire edition of the Monkey translation. I read some some excerpts from it when I was a kid. I love them. There's the complete Sturgeon short story collections. They came out from North Atlantic Books, and it was Paul Williams, I believe. Paul Williams was this kind of great guy who did this wonderful edition, and he edited all of these, and all of Sturgeon's work is in there, and he's really an interesting writer to me. And so is Faulkner, as far as a short story writer. There's all my old Dickens first editions. They're not all of them. I collected them in London because he is one of my all-time favorite writers. And I collected them because I love him. And I've got to start getting rid of them because I just don't have room for them all. And I never read them in that edition. So, And there's the collected Lafferty stories and the Bertolt Brecht. There's some more Lafferty in there. On the end of the bookend, I'm using Doris Peserkia. She is such a weird science fiction writer. I like her. That Benedict Arnold book is one of the best books I ever reviewed. It's a terrific history of American uh, American uh, Revolution, and Benedict Arnold is such a character. And there's a few Ligottis in there. So I guess I'm going to leave it at that. So I just I wanted you to see that. There's one shelf. I don't know if I'll keep doing this, but I, I was so surprised and dismayed by how many people were interested in just looking at books on bookshelves that I thought I'd do one more. And I will say, I'm not close off by going in to the bathroom because I haven't been to the bathroom in like a long, long time. This is the this is where I do all the, my most of my my master bathing goes on in here. And I was thinking that you know when I was when I was a kid, I didn't master bathing as I've said since I was a kid, and uh, reading books while I was master bathing, and um, and uh, the great part was that. Uh, you know, it used to be I'd be really embarrassed. You know, your mother or your father comes in and you're masturbating in there with a book. And, and now I realize that pretty much all over the world, almost everybody is just sitting in the bathtub reading books or metaphorically doing the same. And if they're not sitting in the bathtub reading books, they really should be. So what I thought I could say, conclude to, with this talk today is that for those of you who felt embarrassed 
that you spent large parts of your life sitting in the bathtub with books. If anyone ever makes fun of you again, you can say, hey, baby, I was here before everybody else. I've been doing this a long, long time. And you're new to sitting around the bathtub reading books. But uh, I think most of us, us people who waste our time reading books, we're kind of coming into our own in this quarantine. It's a good time for us all to uh, just do what it is we do normally anyway. Okay, well, uh, I hope this is uh, of interest to you, and uh, I hope it didn't, wasn't too much of a waste of a time. And if it is a waste of a time, you can just go take a bath. Okay, uh, happy bathing, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care of yourself. Stay safe.